My name is Possible, and I'll be your tutor for today. In our previous discussion, we look at some of the technologies, and then from there, we ended the circular flow model. And then the circular flow model, we realized that the economy moves on, it keeps on moving and moving. What goes out comes in, and what comes in also goes out. What goes to the household comes back to the fair, and what belongs to the fair also goes back to the household. Now, this shows that there is a symbiosis in the economy. Symbiosis. So symbiosis means there is no leakage. No leakage in the sense that whatsoever goes out comes in into the economy. Then this leads us to some of the assumptions of the business of the circular flow model. Sorry, some of the assumptions of the circular flow model. Now, we were using only household and the fair. So, first assumption is that we assume that there is no government intervention. Assumption. We assume that there is no government intervention. Again, we assume that whatsoever goes out comes in, meaning that whatsoever we produce within the economy is going to be sold out. So all productions or all the things that we are going to produce, they are going to be sold out. So we assume that all goods produced are sold. All goods produced are sold. And then there is no government intervention or activities. We also assume that all income received are spent. All the income received, factor income received by the household, are spent on the product markets. All the income received by the household are spent on the product markets. And then we also assume that there are only two economic agents or entities that exist. exist. So we have only two economic entities or agents that exist. There is no government intervention. All goods produced are sold. All incomes are spent. These are the assumptions under the settler flow model. So straight away from there, let us continue with some of the other technologies and how we work on them, their formulas. Right? Good. So we are going to look at... Market price. Market price. When you talk about market price, we are talking about the prevailing price on the market as a result of the invisible hand of the market. As a result of the invisible hand of the market. Now, the invisible hand of the market are demand and supply. So we are saying the demand and supply helps us to know the price that is supposed to be put on the commodity on the market. So we are saying that market price, they are the prevailing price on the market as a result of the interaction of the invisible hands of the market. That is market price. Now let me tell you that any market price that you pick or 
in economics when you see market price it means that it has some iota of indirect tax on it yes indeed when you go to market and you're going to buy tomato you go there to realize probably you budgeted for let me use Ghana cities let me say you budgeted for one Ghana city or one dollar Right, you use one dollar to go to the market just because you want to go and buy tomato. And then when you went, you went there, you went there to realize that it's not one Ghana city or it's not one dollar. It is rather two Ghana cities or two dollars. And then you ask the tomato seller that, hey, woman, now the tomato is expensive. The woman will tell you that. Don't you know that prices of fuel or petrol or oil or LPG, the liquid, liquefied petroleum something something has increased. And then you stand and ask yourself, what does the increment in the petrol or oil has to do with tomato? Trust me, the woman also picked car. When she was coming, she bought a taxi or a car in order to bring the items to the market. So she has to inculcate, she has to put the charge that the driver charged her on the goods that she sells or on the tomato that she sells. So we are saying that indirectly, the tax that raised on the petroleum sector, which is resulting in an increment in the petroleum or oil and fuel or something, and then because of that, the driver is charging a higher price from the woman, the woman is charging that iota and is now adding it, adding it up to the tomato. So we are saying that when we go to the market, there's some iota of indirect tax on the product that you're going to buy. Again, government can charge firms tax, they can increase their taxes, and then the firms also can indirectly shift them to the consumers. So if you're going to buy something from the market, we are saying that there is an iota of indirect tax on the commodity. I hope you are getting it. Now putting it aside, there is nothing called subsidy on it. So all market prices exclude, listen to me, all market prices exclude subsidy and include indirect tax. So when you are working on the economics, and then, listen to me carefully, when you're working under economics, and then they tell you to convert a figure to market price, make sure to add indirect tax to it. I mean indirect tax. What did I say? Indirect tax, not direct tax, not personal income tax, not corporate tax. We mean indirect tax. Add indirect tax to the figure, and then subtract from the figure. So just subsidy figure from the value and then add indirect tax. And that one will lead you to what is called market price. Look at it on the board. So at the market price, we add And then we add indirect tax. If you want to send anything to market price, if you want to convert any figure to market price, subtract subsidy and then add indirect tax. Subtract subsidy and then add indirect tax. I hope it makes sense. The next one is. When you talk about factor cost, factor cost is a rare price that sellers of goods and services receive. Right? It's a rare price that sellers of goods and services receive. Yes, indeed, they sold the product to you at a price of two Ghana or two dollars.
but there are some iron type of tax component on the item. So they are paying the tax to the government indirectly. I hope you are getting it. In some companies, they pay value added tax. So after squashing the tax, after taking away the tax, and then adding subsidy, we are saying that you are working under factor cost. Because under market price, taxes are included. Taxes are included. So factor cost, if you take tax away, if you take tax away, you will get the net, say net, like you subtract the tax from it, from the market price. So the figure that you get is the net excluding the tax. So that is what is called factor cost. So in economics, if you are converting anything from, uh, if you are converting anything to factor cost, listen to me, and the economics, if you are converting anything or any value into factor cost, make sure to add subsidy and subtract indirect tax. We add subsidy and we subtract indirect tax. And that one will give you what is called the value at factor cost. Factor cost excludes indirect tax. And it includes subsidy. Look at it. So factor cost includes subsidy and excludes indirect tax. You see, getting to know these two concepts are very, very important. They are very, very important. So whenever you are being given any figure and then they tell you to convert it into market price, don't forget that market price moves with tax, indirect tax. Please, not corporate tax, not personal income tax. Nothing than indirect tax. Add indirect tax to it, and then the opposite of a tax is a subsidy. Then you subtract subsidy. Now, straight away from there, let us look at the third important thing, which is the total domestic expenditure. It's when you talk about the total expenditure, uh, domestic expenditure, we are talking about the expenditures that have transpired within a domestic country over a period of time, say one year, and the spending that has transpired within a domestic country, say one year. I hope you are getting it. And then if you want to measure the total domestic expenditure that has transpired within a domestic country, we say that the total domestic expenditure, so the total domestic expenditure, total Domestic expenditure. We are saying that they are equal to consumption. In economics, we use C to represent consumption. So be familiar with it from now. C plus investment. We use I to represent investment and economics. G. G stands for government expenditure or government spending. Investment. Consumption. So when you put all of this together, we are going to get the total domestic expenditure. The expenditure that has transpired within the economy for a period of time, say one year. So this is what we call total domestic expenditure. And then aside the total domestic expenditure, we have total final expenditure. Total final final expenditure. Total final expenditure. That one is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending Plus whatsoever has been exported. So we could shorten it by saying that it's equal to total domestic expenditure.
Asia plus export because the whole of this is here. So TDE plus export will give us total finance expenditure. Total finance expenditure talks about the goods and services that we produce, like the finished goods that we produce within an economy for a period of time. For a period of time. For a period of time. And then it includes export, what we are exporting to other countries because we produce them within the domestic country. And it is final goods. It is uh, final goods. They are finished goods, sorry. Yes, and because they are the finished goods, that's why we are exporting them to other countries. I hope you are getting it. So we are saying that total final, uh, uh, total final expenditure, total final expenditure, total final expenditure is equal to consumption plus investment from government, expenditure plus export. And that is what we are going to get. And then when you add imports to it, you are going to get gross domestic expenditure or gross domestic products. So gross domestic product is equal to is equal to consumption plus investment plus consumption plus investment plus government spending plus export minus imports. I, I hope you are getting it. Minus imports. Something it you can say that is. TFE, total final expenditure minus imports. So total final expenditure minus imports. In economics, we use X for exports and we use M for imports. I hope you are getting it. So in our next lecture, we are going to start with do uh, gross domestic product or gross domestic expenditure and then we are going to treat it in deep of incarnation follow it for more elaborations because the lecture or the lesson is getting hotter and hotter it is getting interesting and interesting now we are at gross domestic expenditure or gross domestic products in our next lesson we are going to look at the component of it and then from there we measure it accordingly. I hope it makes sense. Once again, my name is Possible from Ghana.